Giggity. Hi guys. <laughs> I'm completely scattered today. Unreal. Trying to figure out something and um, I made him count them, <laughs> count what I was looking for. And meanwhile, we're supposed to go live. Hopefully everybody's okay today. Um, had a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about. Um, the company Southern Ridge Training, you know that I absolutely love this company. They create the most amazing surfaces and the most amazing embellishments. And um, I don't know if our friends in the U.S. have heard about this, but we've had some massive, massive storms on the western part of Canada. Huge flooding, devastating flooding and damage on uh, that part. And my dear friend Karen um, Beaupre, uh, lives right in the area where that's happening. However, she is untouched. She is safe. She is sound um, and her business is sound. She's uh, out of the immediate flood zone. And so um, she is safe for now. And um, all of the product that she manufactures, um, there are going to be some delays in shipping, but not huge. Canada Post has made arrangements so that anything being shipped east is no problem, but aside anything going west is just going to be a nightmare. So uh, yes, yeah, so Karen Beaupre is still shipping. And uh, so if you're looking for anything at uh, chipboard.ca, any of the surfaces or embellishments that I use and you're looking for those, she is shipping. They are just going to be a little slower than usual, just by a couple of days. The same goes for my pal Deb uh, and her website. If you have ordered um, kits or anything from her, there is going to be a little delay, but they are still shipping. So don't worry about that. It will probably take a couple of extra days, but it is still going to be out and gone. Um, for folks uh, that are purchasing from companies in Alberta, everything is business as usual as long as it's going east. If it's going west to Vancouver or any place in BC, it's going to be a little slow. So, uh, but both my pal Deb and my pal uh, Karen Beaupre both are safe and sound and out of the immediate flood zone. So, all is good. We're going to play today. <laughs> I love these little ornaments. They're just so stinking cute and they're so easy to do to get a really great result. Uh, the surf surface we're using is this little sled. Um, this is actually a Renee Mullins design. I didn't know that until uh, just recently. This little sled is one of her creations. And so if you're looking for the surface, you can find them at plumpurdy.com. Um, as usual, Renee's got some really adorable uh, projects on this as well so you know if you want to throw a little business um her way you can find that surface on plumpurdy.com especially if you're in the u.s because she'll be able to ship quick to you um, if you're in canada this surface is available at stockade.ca um, and they can ship really quick the service from them is fantastic and i also have these on my website in sets of three so if you're looking for them they're there um, the embellishments, the snowflakes that I used on these pieces, they're just incredible, absolutely beautiful. They're so incredible. Those are available on uh, chipboard.ca. I do have a ton of them ordered. We went through them so quick last week, it was not funny. Uh, so I do have some ordered, so we're waiting on those to arrive. They should be here later this coming week uh, with a little bit of luck and good management. And, um, but if you uh, are looking for them right away, um, Karen Beaupre has them on chipboard.ca. Yes, she does ship to the US. Prices are very reasonable on her freight and um, <laughs> tons and tons and tons of great stuff on her site. So go and check that out. Um, what else? Oh, Renee might be a little bit quiet today. He's not 100%. He had a little TN flare this morning. So he's a little, like me, he's very grumpy when he's in pain and even grumpier when he hasn't had coffee. I have coffee. You have coffee. I haven't seen improvement yet. The caffeine obviously hasn't hit. <laughs> well, this is the second cup. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. You're slow today. Mm -hmm. I figured you'd be on your third by now. <laughs> and I will disappear around two o'clock to make butter chicken. Yeah. He's, he, we have this new thing at home here. Um, family cooks on Saturday. I don't. So they've decided to take over the cooking. So last weekend was my husband took over the cooking. This weekend it's Renee's turn. So he's making butter chicken. 
of course. Because, <laughs> you know, that's not at all self-serving. <laughs> nope. So, yeah. So he's cooking tonight. So he's going to disappear for a few minutes around 2 o'clock to go put that on. So, um, I think that's about it. Um, we got all the surfaces and everything in this week. We have lots of bobs. Bobs are back in stock. We've got tons of those. The little uh, gingerbread pins there. Yep. We have tons of those. Um, we get the tags in for Deck the Halls, the, the piece that we did last week, and we finally got the tags. Those oh. are in. We have uh, a bunch of those in, and we got the little sleds for the piece that we're <laughs> using today. Uh, we have grunge stamps in stock, too. That's the stamp set that I'm using today. And what else? The only thing we didn't get, though, is the snowflakes, but I have an alternative for you, too, so we'll talk about that. And, oh yeah, and then we're going to talk, I had a couple of people ask me questions about cleaning stencil brushes, and um, Linda Safranco had a great question about uh, the graphite paper, the DecoArt graphite paper, so we're going to talk about that too. So if you guys are ready to get started, so am I. Yay. Oh my god, that camera is out of focus. Okay. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Really out of focus. My hair looks blue. Your hair looks blue? <laughs> I just happened to look down and saw a shot of it. It's like, my God, my hair looks blue. I'm a blue haired lady. Yeah. It's that light. Is it that light that's <laughs> Oh it's my that light that God. Hair like blue. I sometimes think it's just better if I don't see myself on camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. There it is. It's looking pretty good. It's still not as crisp as it should be. But yeah, this is our project for today. We're going to do these three little guys. I think they're cute. I think they're freaking adorable. And they're so fun. And, and they're not difficult to paint. This is the great thing about them, is that they're not difficult to paint. So we're going to have a little bit of fun with that. But before we get started on that, I wanted to cover a couple of things. Um, these... These little snowflakes, um, these I got at our local dollar store. So if you can't get these laser cut ones, or if they're not in the budget, or for whatever reason, these little laser cut ones will work just fine. Same process. Um, just going to dab some paint, white paint on them, sprinkle a little glamour dust. Bob's your uncle, Sally's your aunt. There you go. So they will work just fine for our purposes. Like I said, I found these ones at our local dollar store. They came in... You know, a pouch, there's probably, I don't know, 50 of them in there for, you know, a dollar or so. And there's different designs. Um, so use what you have on hand. If you've got some, even the little plastic ones look pretty too. They, those will work. I love these ones though from Southern Ridge Trading. They're just gorgeous and they're so delicate. So, uh, yep. That's an, an excellent replacement for that. Um, and there's a variety of different ones. Most craft stores have little bags of snowflakes at this time of year, or little metal charms. Those will all work. I'm not going to be too fussy. And push come to shove, you could use a snowflake stencil too, just to put one or two snowflakes in place. So, I mean, don't feel that you absolutely have to have everything that I use, because you don't. So... I'm going to move these out of the way because I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, Linda Safranco, my dear friend, in Ospelousa, Ospelu I can never pronounce where she's from. Opelousas? Opelousas? She's in Louisiana anyway. Um, <laughs> Louisiana. <laughs> it's in Louisiana. I can't pronounce it, but I make a mess of it every time. This is Deckwart's uh, graphite paper. This is a white one. I love this one my favorite. Um, Linda had run into a problem. <laughs> she uh, was trying to trace with a brand new sheet and it wouldn't transfer. Um, and there is a matte side and a shiny side to this graphite paper. And if you run into that problem, let me show you a quick trick. Take a piece of either shop towel or paper towel. I'm going to use a piece of shop towel. And uh, just lay it flat and do this. There is a waxy coating on this, um, and you can just wipe it gently like this, and it will 
take some of that off to stress the paper enough that you'll get a cleaner transfer. So if you're finding that you're not getting a really good transfer, just a light wipe with some shop towel or paper towel will uh, break that seal, so to speak, and you'll be able to use your graphite paper. And um, having said that, I'm going to give away a package of Decorwards graphite. We've got a one white and one black, so we're going to give away that today. So there we go. We got a white one and we've got a black one. So we're going to have um, two winners today. Somebody's going to get some deck work graphite paper. Plus, we have uh, three prize packs over there. Um, I have no idea what's in them, so they're going to be a surprise. <laughs> Didn't you pack them? I did, but. How do you not know what's in them? I have no idea what's in them. Or you have no idea which, which ones. As what? Uh, that's exactly right. I have no idea. What I, <laughs> I just packed a bunch of fun stuff into them and I then completely forgot what I had packed. So I know that there's probably surfaces and stencils and True. maybe even a set of brushes. I'm 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 not, I don't know. Not completely. <laughs> I have if your father brought home a cold, I'm going to kill him. He was snuffling he, he, and... He does drive a Petri dish. I He's on a four-wheeled Petri dish. Honest to God. The man is driving school bus. Six-wheeled. Six-wheeled? Yeah, I suppose. It's school bus. School bus. Good. Anyway, Four I've... tires in the back and two yeah. up front. So. He was snuffling and talking about having a, a scratchy throat the other day, and now I get up this morning with a runny nose, so... You know, he might be pushing up daisies by the end of the day. Especially if he gave me a cold. I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> Alrighty, the other thing, the other question that I had this week was um, talking about cleaning stencil brushes. Um, and I had a mess of them to clean up today, let me tell you. But I wanted to talk about that for a second. Um, this is what I use to clean my uh, Stencil Pro stencil brushes. Um, and I believe me, mine do not get the love that they so you know richly deserve but let's talk about cleaning them i use um one of these little things this little heart-shaped thing it's got teeth you know and i use a little bit of hand sanitizer and then work in a circular fashion and then just run those bristles through those little teeth on this little heart this is called a brush groomer and let me tell you this thing cleans up your brushes really quick and really simple so a little hand sanitizer and then i just roll it to get the excess out and then just clean it on the paper towel like that and that for me is just the answer but I've even left paint in my stencil brushes and this little bugger gets it all out. It's great. But that hand sanitizer or um, Jack Studio Soap will work on uh, on natural hair stencil brushes. The Decawart uh, brush cleaner also works really well. Uh, but the big thing for me is using this little this little groomer here, this little heart-shaped groomer. They're absolutely fantastic, especially if you're trying to remove dry paint out of your stencil brush. It also works great for cleaning your regular brushes because it helps you get some of that paint out of way up out of the ferrule. It's a fantastic little rig. I clean mine with Joe Sonny's brush cleaner in the palm of my hand. I do that. I clean mine on, uh, on my palm as well, but I find this one, it gets that, you know, the stuff that's way up in here out really well. Love this little groomer. Works like a hot damn. And then you just rinse it clean and you're good to go. Just a little bit of cool water and it's all set for the next time you have to clean your brushes. It's a handy little rig. So hopefully that answers those two questions. Um, enough. Um, if you ever have questions about the, anything regarding painting, I mean, if I can answer it, I will certainly try to. All you got to do is send me a, you can ask me here on the live or you can send me an email. Either one. It all works. <laughs>
Oh my goodness. Mm. Where the can tea. you find these brush groomers? Uh, um, there's two places. I have some on the website. Uh, they're also available on stockade.ca. I know we have some on the website. I don't know how many we have on the website. Eleven. We have eleven on the website? Okay. There's eleven. You asked for the I did ask, yeah. <laughs> They're handy. They're very handy. Lost you. Did the sound go? No, the sound's still going. Okay. As long as we're okay. Video keeps coming in and out. And it's Facebook. Is that on Facebook? Yeah, we're going to see a little bit of that, I'm afraid. I'm not sure why, but... <laughs> All right, gang. So, um, I... <sighs> I'm excited about painting these little guys. I was having way too much fun when I was designing them. But when I catch myself giggling while I'm designing, I know I'm pretty much on the right track. So I have two prepped already. Um, I dug out my... I haven't played with stamps in so long. And I, I just really wanted something with a stamped background. <laughs> Because I really like, I like how it looks. So I dug out my grunge set. This is this is my grunge set with the, um, I have one with the script. And then that pretty little filigree. <laughs> Chat box just started working suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to get rid of that because it's cluttering up the, where you're going to be working. So. Yeah. Go. so I'm using the grunge set. This is a Stampenda set. Um we do have a bunch of them on the website right now. I love this. This is, I think, probably my favorite set is that grunge set with all of the, the crackle and that little scrolly thing and then the script and the, the little, of course, it's got to have a postage mark because I'm kind of obsessed with those. And then this one is the vintage note. So that's the two stamps that I use the most. And I mean, I use them all the time. You can tell. Look. Yeah. It's a mess. I better clean you my still stamps. Got extreme sheen on there. Oh yeah, <laughs> that stuff is like freaking bulletproof. But um, I love that stamp set and my brayer. Now the gold that I used on these, um, you can use the twenty-four karat gold, which is the extreme sheen. This stuff is phenomenal. Um, <laughs> the other day I was playing with some metallic paints, and I realized that the deck work fluid acrylics have metallics and I decided to try this. Oh my god. This is an awesome metallic. The one in the fluid acrylic line. It is just phenomenal. So I'm going to use my brayer and a little bit of that um, gold from the fluid acrylic. It's a lot finer milled. This beautiful metallic. Just beautiful. So I'm going to roll that onto my stamp. This is my, this is my all-time favorite stamp. I love this script, even though it's not legible. You can't tell what it says. I really am not worried too worried about that part. But I love that little bit of script. It's just so pretty. And then I have to have have to have something with a circle on it. I'm not sure why, but it's just a, a me thing, I guess. But I love that little. A good Postage element. We had a question? Yeah. Uh, it's actually in reference to your website. Okay. Uh, her printer crashed and she wants to buy your pattern. Mm -hmm. But your patterns will not work for whatever reason. Okay. Um, how can I get printed patterns? Uh, they are available on the website. Yep. We have a section there for printed patterns. And if there's a pattern you're looking for that is not in there, uh, we can do that too. Just let us know which one you're looking for, and we can make sure it gets up there. Um, what does finer milled mean? When I talk about finer milled, I talk about the coarseness or thickness of the pigment. Now, in these, and I, I can probably show you the difference between the two. Um, this is, oh, goodness, didn't shake that well enough. Um, this is the Extreme Sheen Metallics. Let me. So it has a coarser 
pigment in it. Actually, it's a different shape pigment. And so it has almost like a glittery effect in it. This one looks very creamy. It is almost like a solid color. So it's just a difference in the pigment. This one is much finer milled, whereas this one is a little bit coarser. I find this one, although it has a great metallic sheen to it, it's softer, almost more like pearlescent, as opposed to um, you know that bright shiny. Both of these are beautiful. Yeah, the pigment was more of a powder rather than like a sand. Yes, exactly. So it's, um, I really love this one. It has that um, a su more subtle sheen, I think, is the end result. Um, whereas this one has that more of that metallic flash, that reflectivity. So I think that's the difference. <laughs> For me, it is. How do you clean your stamps? She doesn't. I, I, well, I do clean them, just not as often as I should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But look, I will show you how I clean those, too. So I'm just going to roll a little. I love this crackle one. This one is just such a cool stamp. And look at that. It's so cool. I love that effect. Looks like cracked. Did you know. this video on Facebook? It's pretty. Oh, so now that um, that's a great question so I'm going to get rid of that palette paper and let me show you how I clean a stamp this will only take a minute um, let's go with this one here so I'm going to I have a cheap stencil brush or a cheaper stencil brush I should say that I use for cleaning my stamps and just and that's the only thing this one does um, so I do the same thing I'm going to grab a little bit of hand sanitizer oh my goodness a little bit of hand sanitizer on that stamp and then I use a an inexpensive I hate to use the word cheap an inexpensive stencil brush <laughs> to scrub my stamp and that just helps remove all of that paint the downside is i don't do this very often for a couple of reasons um, because i'm using acrylic paint and hand sanitizer tends to dry out the rubber so i don't want to do it too too often but it, this does work very effectively as a means of rescuing a stamp basically rescuing rescuing or cleaning out all of those little details you have a lot of stamps that require rescuing <laughs> <laughs> well i have some stamps that don't ever see paint mm. i have a lot they just yeah, see sure. ink um but this grunge stamp but most of those inks are organic inks aren't they yeah a lot of them are yeah, yeah. so they just you know they clean up with a little bit of water or they clean up with you know something just even just a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol will do that so but yeah have that just reserve one just for cleaning your stamps and this is just an inexpensive one i think i got this one at michael's or i don't know it's in the craft section at michael's store <laughs> you know i usually just take a baby wipe a I... baby wipe works well too yeah. but just I, I would have to do it while the paint's still wet yeah but once the paint dries, um, I like that. And baby wipes mostly just have either, you know, glycol or something in them that just removes them. But that's as difficult as that is. I will say this though, the metallics are a lot harder to get off <laughs> than regular <laughs> acrylics. So uh, just bear that in mind. Kiss off stain remover will... Kiss off works great remove the ink and won't dry out the rubber yep oh, kiss off i have some of that kiss off will also take paint out of your clothing really effectively so but yeah i'm i still absolutely love these two stamp sets this um the grunge stamp set it comes with i think it's four or five pieces in that set and then the vintage note is just my all-around favorite that one gets used all the time as you can see so the the whole process of putting that background in is just base coat it with the berry red which i, I love that red 
it just pops, let me tell you. It's a great red. And then um, with the gold over top, whether it's the Extreme Sheen or the Fluid Acrylic, either one will work just fine. Um, I really liked that sort of bright effect. And now we're going to knock it back a little bit <laughs> because it's a little too bright. <laughs> and M. Burling. When I was on Country Bear, I saw your brand of stencil brushes. What is the difference? My brand is the, uh, let me show you, because I have some here. I haven't been able to get any recently. So. Oh, the texture brushes. The texture brushes, yeah. Now, I work a lot on textured surfaces, um, and this is the difference if you look at it. This one has a natural hair. And then it has two layers of bristle. There's this long, what's referred to as the LO, the length of the bristle. This one has two LOs. So there's one shorter one here. And then in the center of the brush, there's like a bunch of little mini brushes. <laughs> and this is designed for working on all sorts of surfaces, not just smooth ones, but also for um, rough textured surfaces. So if you're working on walls, if you're working on large pieces of furniture, if you're working on um, heavy canvases. If I were working on a textured surface with a standard stencil brush, I would really have to work hard to get the paint into the lowest part of the texture so that I would get a nice stenciled finish. This brush has two layers, so it does most of, the work for me. most of the work for me. So I don't have to work quite as hard to get it down into those lower sections. So that's why it's built the way it is. It's for working on tex textured or smooth surfaces. It works on both. You works show your signature on it. Yeah, it works particularly well on fabrics. Yeah, Tracy Moreau's signature line. Yeah. So, yep, yeah, and these are made by Dynasty for me. But, yep, yeah, these are... These are awesome brushes, but I use these mostly for working on large scale pieces and on heavily on heavy textures. Love them. That's a great question, Anne. Thank you. Uh, oh, what's Jessica saying? Uh, it's so exciting how super close you are to the 5K mark. Oh yeah, it is getting close, isn't yeah, it? I think. Let me bring it up here. Try to grab the right mouse. Think. <laughs> yeah. I think you're at like. Yeah, we are getting very close. Forty-nine hundred. I think you only need like ninety. Oh wow, less than a hundred. I think you only need like eighty-three. Wow. So if you're not subscribed to my channel. <laughs> yeah, eighty-three. <laughs> oh wow. Um, we would greatly appreciate it if you did, um, simply because it it when we hit that five thousand mark, it offers us a lot more perks and a lot more ways to to share video with you guys, and and it gives us the ability to do more. So um, that's exciting. So and that's what we've been working towards. That's a goal. It's a it's our little goal is to get to the five thousand mark. Actually. We'd like to get higher, obviously, but I mean. I wonder if I can add that. So. I'm going to see if I can't add a widget. He wants to add a widget. So you guys can see the goal. Yeah. So I'm just floating around the outside edge of this sled with a little bit of soft black. Now, the idea being... <laughs> new friends, please. Yep, new friends, please. <laughs> YouTube subscribers, yes! Yep. Yeah, we'll just call it subscription goal. Yep. So, all I'm doing really is just aging the edge of this, but there's purpose behind it. Um, by putting a darker outline or a darker edge on this, it pulls the focus towards the center of the sled. So it means that I'm going to have a lighter value at the center of this sled. And then whatever is in the middle of this is going to get more attention because it's going to have this nice light value, this nice bright color right behind it. So it's going to pull the eye towards the center of it. In case you've ever wondered why I do that so often. There we go. And then 
once it's dry, I'm going to put just a light wash of that soft black over top. I think we're back. Are we back, guys? Yes. Okay, good. Very good. We got that. It's all right. But so look, we, we, we got the little widget thing. We got a widget thing. <laughs> It'd be nice to see, uh, to hit that 5,000. I mean, we've, I was looking at um, the number of new designs we've created since we started doing this. And I, I'm averaging six new patterns a month. That's a lot. No kidding. <laughs> so I, and I don't know how I'm doing it, to be honest. Because at one time it was like a huge amount of work just to get a couple done. But um, yeah, six new a week that's or a month. That's a lot. So now that I've got my that aged edge around there. I made it a little bit darker, but um, that's okay. I kind of like this. I didn't do any lettering on this. So this is how I got my line drawing ready. Uh, I always put the shape on and then I cut it out so that I can easily line it up onto my surface. So I'm going to line up the top and the edges so that everything lines up properly. And then I've got this little tab that I can flip over and then I can tape that in place. Why didn't it go up? Like so. And that just sort of helps keep it all where it needs to be. It helps maintain that so that it's nice and straight. There's nothing worse than having your line drawing shift when you're in the middle of painting it. So I'm using white graphite. I'm using Decorts white graphite, go figure. And I put that in place. Make sure that everything is nice and straight. Grab my, I like this red pen for this. Um, this way I can see where I've been. And then I'm just going to trace my line drawing on. I had so much fun designing these little guys. They were just too cute. Now, round things need to be round. There's nothing worse than trying to draw your... <laughs> round things need to be round. Round things need to be round. It drives me insane when I see something traced on and all of the circle things are egg-shaped. Drives me bananas. <laughs> you know, berries supposed to be round. So use a round thing. I use um, my shape maker. Of course, I couldn't find my shape maker right now. So hello, I will make do. Round things need to be round. So <laughs> you have to stop making new patterns. My budget won't take. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever get painter's block? Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and it drives me insane when I do. 
because I, most of the time, if I stop designing for any period of time, I have a hard time getting restarted because I have too many ideas in my head and they sort of crowd each other. Um, and so the solution for me is to doodle. I sit down and I get an idea and I draw it out or sketch it out. And sometimes it comes out fully formed. I know from the minute I do it, what color it, I'm going to use, what surface I'm going to use. Um, and sometimes I'll have a line drawing that just doesn't talk to me and it has to talk to me. It doesn't talk to me. It doesn't get done. Um, and I, I've had that a couple of times. I did a, a design recently of a little snowman and it came out and it was really cute and it wasn't talking to me. I just sort of looked at it and went, meh. <laughs> nope, not today. I'm not doing that today. It just, you know, they don't, the design doesn't talk to me or doesn't inspire me. So it gets set aside. I might come back to it in six months or a year. I might never come back to it, but I have boxes full of line drawings. Hard to believe it's going to be, it's only 41 days until 2022. I know. I don't know. The time just goes whoosh. Mm -hmm. But I'm always busy, so... Is that a special brand of red pen? Um, this is a Uniball Signo. It's a 0.38 with red ink. Um, the reason I use them for tracing, I love them. I use the black ones too for designing and drawing and whatnot. Um, the reason I love them is that super fine point. And the red, I just because you, it's visible, you can see where you've been. So, ta-da! But this is why I like these uniballs. So look how fine the the transfer is. I, I, not a heavy, thick line. And that's why I don't use the stylus because I don't like that heavy, thick line. So I like that fine little detail. It's much easier to get rid of when it comes time to remove them. But that's why I use those all the time. Uh, Bev Eden. Hi, Bev. Had a miserable week, but spent a few evenings painting Santa tags with a book page base. Oh, oh nice. Cool. cool. So quick and easy and cheered me up. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad it cheered you up because nothing cheers me up more than sitting and painting for a little bit. And I, these little guys did that for me this week. I was feeling very uninspired earlier in the week. And then, um, I don't know. I something I was painting cardinals that's what it was and then I thought it wouldn't be cute to do blue jays and and chickadees mm -hmm. so I've got a blue jay started and I did chickadees and cardinals cardinals we almost forgot cardinals that's the piece we're doing for the 4th of December wait 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 what it's behind you right yeah it's right over right over my shoulder that's the piece right there we're doing on December 4th. Okay. What happened? Well, Hoppin, what did you do? There we go. Sorry. Hey, yeah. <laughs> oh, camera went crazy. Yeah. Yep. Oh, no, that wasn't the camera. That was me reframing by accident. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oopsie. Click somewhere I shouldn't have clicked. <laughs> no. So, um, yeah, that's the piece we're doing on the 4th of December. I'm excited about that. We have just ridiculous amount of prizes to give out that day. I got a box this week from, uh, a package this week from um, uh, Sheila Landry. There's a gorgeous giveaway in there. I'm so excited about that. And then um, we've got stuff from Decor. We've got brushes coming from Dynasty, some really nice stuff from Dynasty. Um, we have a set of my favorite fluid acrylic colors plus a thing of gesso and a thing of my favorite matte medium <laughs> so it's a six color set of the fluid acrylics plus I the even started painting it i know <laughs> <laughs> i just i'm excited about that i'm just it's going to be a good week so um there's our little buds we're going to start by base coating our little bud 
And I used a color called Cobblestone. This was a new color that came out in 2019. 2019? No, 2020. Hello. Jeez. Of course, I can't get it out of the bottle. So, Cobblestone. It's, this is a nice neutral. Um, it's like a taupey gray. It's a nice warm tone. I like this, especially for birds. Looks great under beards and whatnot, too. So we're going to base coat our little birds. What about beards? Yep, beards. It's for doing Santa beards and whatnot. It's great. So I'm using a number two round. And the technique for this little guy is pretty straightforward. And it's really loose. We're just going to follow the shape like this and just stroke it in. And it's okay if it goes over the feet because we're going to put those back in. Don't worry. Now, you notice I want him to have be kind of round and fluffy. And so this little guy is going to be just like this. Neatness doesn't count for this, quite honestly. We're just going to make a fluffy, fat little bird. Um, so. And it's okay if you go up over those, the cap in that little space under the neck. It's okay if you go over because we're going to put it on more color on anyway. Uh, is the Christmas Cardinal on your website? Yes, it is. Ah. Yep. Or is the pattern not up yet? Yeah, the pattern is set up. It went up on Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> one of the days of the week. Yep, one of the days of the week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's up there. And it is available in a print or um, an e-packet. I'm so disappointed. My biggest show of the year is on December 4th. Maybe I'll be able to use my phone to get in. <laughs> well, it'll be dual streamed again. Yeah. So um, if you have trouble accessing YouTube on your phone, you should be able to access the live on, uh, on Facebook. <laughs> L Sky, Renee, how do I get? How do we win giveaways? Well, you just entered, so you just entered. It's as simple as that. Just comment, hit the subscribe button, please. Yeah. We'd appreciate that. Um, but yeah, it's just that simple. All you have to do is participate. Yeah. Basically, just be here, be a person, say yep. hi to people. Yep. Interact with your fellow creatives. That's all we ask. So, as you can see, this is not, we're not talking like heavy duty base coating here. It's pretty loose and simple. Uh, she doesn't have any brayers, but I think Sandy does. Sandy, I think, yes, yeah, Sandy does have some on her website. Now, these little guys are meant to be fluffy. Just keep in mind, we are not painting realistic chickadees here. These guys are very simply painted. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is our membership program. You don't have to join that if you don't want to. You can just hit the red subscribe button. Yep. The blue join button is if you want to... Yeah, that's a paid membership. Yeah, that's a that's paid a, membership. Yeah. You don't have to do that one yep. if you don't want to. No, 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 no. <laughs> just subscribe to the channel. It's just that red button. You click on that. And turn on the notifications so yeah. that you know when we're going live. And also when we post things um, interesting, upcoming classes, events, and whatnot, we post those in the community tab. And so you'll get notified if you have your notifications on. So there is our little fat little birds. <laughs> Subscribing is free, joining as a price. Yes. <laughs> yes. Although our members are getting ready, gearing up for their um, their free live class. Yeah. Well, I suppose it's not technically free, but it goes as no. part of their membership. But they're getting ready for that next week, for the 29th. Which one's that? What was that? We're doing hot chocolate and cookies. Right. Yeah. Right. Speaking of Sandy. Yeah. I just ordered my media fluids on Monday. Got them Friday night. Nice. She is quick to ship. 
She is. She ships just like us. I mean, we ship quick as quick as possible. So the tail feathers on this little fella are base coated with that cobblestone as well. And then we're going to talk about how you do these wings, but I do those towards the end. So, so I base coat that in, but I'm leaving a little space between each of those tail feathers, like so. December 4th is my painting club party. <laughs> <gasps> well, on the upside, video will be available after the fact. Yes. So if you can't join us, that's okay. Cute and simple. <laughs> Cute and simple is a winning combination. Well, you know what? Um, Peggy Harris told me <laughs> many, many moons ago. <laughs> She's not wrong. That uh, when it came to doing craft sales and markets and whatnot, cute goes to the cash register. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you know what? She was absolutely right because for myself, um, <laughs> you know, you can't help yourself sometimes, especially when you go to these Christmas markets and you see somebody go, oh my God, that's so cute. <laughs> Cha-ching. It has to go home with you. What is a good substitute for cobblestone? You know what? Um, any any gray will do just fine. Dove gray will work. Um, let me have a look here. <laughs> Shake a tail feather. Shake a tail feather, yeah. Um, gray sky, slate gray will work. Any one of those grays will work just fine. Just don't want anything too, too dark, that's all. But, you know, something in that same family. And if you're really pressed, you don't have a gray that's going to do the job, try a khaki tan. You know, a taupe, a taupe tone, something warmer, it will work too. You do not have to have exactly the same color. As long as you're in the same tonal family, you're good to go. Somebody just got their second shingles vaccine? Because I don't know what Shinrex is. Shinrex. Shinrex is for Yeah, it's a shingles vaccine. Ah. Yeah, you want to get that. I can't get mine now for another 18 months. Another 18 months. Or no. No, I'm, I'm closer now. So maybe another year. Another year? Yeah. I can't get a Shinrix. So I hate that. <laughs> I really do because I've had shingles twice. And, and each, you, were, you were scheduled to go get I was here. scheduled to get my shingles vaccine when I got them the second time. So it's like, <laughs> really? Oh. <laughs> hey, it's time to go get my shingle back there. Oh, you have shingles. You can't get it for another 18 months. Yep. Yep. It sucked. <laughs> well, that I have no doubt. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> the first time I had shingles, I had them the very typical type that goes around your waist. I know my tummy's talking. I know. So I had shingles at my waistline. Didn't realize the sh Shinrax was a two-part vaccine. Yeah, some of them are. Depends on which type. Shingles sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. yes. Shingles it are does. painful. Yes. Yep. Well, the first time I had them, I had the traditional type right at the waistline, and I got them in August, and thought I'd been stung. I thought oh, yeah. that I had a bee or something up underneath my shirt, and it turned out to be the start of shingles. No fun. And uh, that was no fun. So I went in. They gave me an antiviral and the whole bit, and then said, we'll make an appointment for you in 18 months so you can go get your shingles back. I said, <laughs> okay. And, um, yeah, just before that, year, that time period was up, I got them again, only this time I got them on my head, which sucked big time. What is this? Linda. Had shingles in my eyes? Yes. You can, oh, Ugh. you can lose your vision to that if you're not careful, if it's not properly facials, treated. Shingles. Ooh, man. Yeah. I had them on the side of my head. And I didn't have them bad. Had it on my face and around my eyes. <gasps> that, oh my gosh. I know how bad the headache was from having them on my head. I can't even begin 
to imagine what that must have been like because it's painful. So the leaves, the holly leaves, of course, um, if you've painted with me at all, you know they're going to be antique green because that's my color. <laughs> it's my, my go-to green. I love my antique green. Uh, yeah. right. Did we cover the substitute for cobblestone? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I didn't. You can use any one of those lighter, lighter valued greens, or you can go completely in a different direction. Go with a khaki tan, or um, burlap will work. You can get shingles at any age. Yeah, it's just it's more common in people in my age group. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, we had a. And one of our neighbors here, their six-year-old, had chicken pox the year before. Oof. And um, had shingles a year later. Mm. So. And if I laughed, somebody said to me about, um, you know, shingles are contagious. Well, no, the shingles aren't, but the chicken pox are. So if you haven't had the chicken pox and you come in contact with somebody with shingles, yeah, you can get chicken pox. But shingles are just, they're a misery because they attack the nerves and they're painful. And I don't think it's right that anything should be itchy and hurt that much at the same time. You know, you must have done something wrong in another life to be tortured that way. Uh, on the birds, do I leave a little red showing through on the base coat? Yeah, I do, because you're going to add like three colors over top of this. So as long as it's, you know, 99.9% .9 covered, you're good. That and a very opaque black. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, I this little portion of this bird is going to get about three other colors on it. So don't panic if it's not completely covered. It's fine. So, I've got berries on all of these. Antique green is discontinued? No. No? No, it is not. It might be difficult to get, but it is not discontinued. Stan Clifford and I will have words. <laughs> <laughs> Stan? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'll call Tom. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I base coat all my berries with a little bit of warm white um, for one reason and one reason only is I want the red that I use on these berries to pop. And if I don't base coat them with white first, they just kind of meld and disappear into that red background. Don't want that. So I like to base coat them white. So the holly berries get base coated white and these ones have to get base coated white because these are mistletoe berries and they're going to stay white. For some reason that gold meter hasn't even changed. That might be just a simple refresh. I don't know if it'd be a refresh or what. I don't even know if they could see it on the string. I don't. So, there's my berries, base coated white. It still says 4917. Okay. Oh, well. Not a big deal. You can always go check it manually. He's anxious to see if he, anybody else has subscribed to the channel. So I like that warm white because red is transparent and it's going to be affected by whatever color is underneath it. 4918. Got up by one. Slacking. <laughs> so the eyes on this little guy are going to be base coated white as well. So that little round, I don't worry about that little eyeball in the middle because we're going to use the end of a brush to put that in, but I do want this eyeball to be nice and round. Did you 
You guys want me to move it? <laughs> <laughs> Did you want me to move the the goal counter up here or I got out of the way? So there we go. These guys actually work up really quick once you have all of this little I call this the persnickety stuff. All these little you know base coating. So I'm gonna dry this and I just completely messed up that berry. <laughs> Couldn't you just dot those with a large brush? I'm going to well I could, but it'd be a little thick, so I prefer to paint them in. I completely messed up this berry here because there was too much water in my brush. Oh, that's why she's not even painting in frame. What? <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. She gets sucked into it. Yep. You know, half the time everything ends up in my lap when I'm doing this, so. <laughs> I gave you a monitor for a reason. <laughs> So you can watch. <laughs> yeah, but there's a delay, so I don't realize it until it's too late. <laughs> uh, what green can I use instead? Avocado is a good substitute. Wow, you had that one prepared. Yeah, because it's a common hmm. question. Yep. Avocado is a really good substitute for um, antique green. It's a nice opaque green, and it's a little on the earthy side, so it works really nicely. So, I'm just going to, um, micron this one is a number zero rigger, actually. Number zero. Yeah. Excuses, excuses, Tracy. <laughs> 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 Who was that? I don't know. Uh, that was Robin Storm. Okay. I'll let Many it go. Years. <laughs> she, I love Robin Storm. She's so cute. And she's wonderfully active. I see her on, on um, our Facebook group all the time. And when uh, she's just fabulous. She's fabulous. She's so encouraging to everybody that, can, that um, is part of the group and encouraging to other painters. I, I've never, ever seen anything negative come out of her. She's awesome. <laughs> when you're as good as Tracy, you can make all the excuses you want. <laughs> <laughs> you just smile and nod. <laughs> yeah, she's crazy. It's okay. <laughs> Are those brushes on your website also? I don't no. have any left at the moment. I do have some ordered. However, having said that, um, the brush guys. Yes, the brush uh, guys .com. The brush guys.com. <laughs> we have a coupon code for them. And it's Tracy, capital T R A C Y, and a capital M. Um, and even though, because they're brush site they are a distributor so their brush site everything is already about I think it's 30% or 40% off Offering. regular retail yeah and so if you use the coupon code you get an additional discount on top of that so boom yeah yeah so go get your brushes at the brush guys but use the promo code yep yeah. don't forget to use the promo code yeah so um oh, I just have leaves to do on this one <laughs> Let's discuss recipes. These shingles have to go. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> oh, shingles are there a misery. Okay, I, let's talk about butter chicken then. Butter chicken? You want to talk about butter chicken? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes shingles, but everybody yep, likes butter chicken. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Now let's talk about these birds that need to be painted. Yeah, I'm just going to finish base coating. Now the, the mistletoe down here is matcha green or olive green, depending on which one you have. So I'm just going to quickly base coat these. <laughs> Robin Storm is the one responsible for me being here. <laughs> <laughs> I like how she said responsible. <laughs> <laughs> Not to blame. <laughs> oh my goodness, my stomach is just rumbling. I don't know why. Oh, shut up, you've been fed. Has it? 
Yeah, but it has. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the zombie's still there. Is the zombie still there? Still yeah. going? So I've just put a base coat of matcha green. It'll probably take another coat, but I'll get on to it. I couldn't paint without my lap. I know. It's <laughs> typical. We always, everything we do ends up in the, in there. So the pine boughs on this little guy, um, this is how I do that. I know this is probably not, you know, not definitely not a high art way of doing this, but um, it's very effective, works really well. So I'm just going to grab my liner brush. I'm not even thinking today. Break out my, I'm using a 15 knot liner for this. And I'm going to thin out my paint with a little bit of Joe Sonia's. Just a drop. I just want the paint to be able to move smoothly. And I'm going to stroke in those lines on that bow, like so. So I'm just using a little thinned antique green for this. Just like that. Nothing fancy. So it's just little strokes and I'm leaving a good space between them. As I said, nothing fancy. Just like that. And there we have our pine boughs in. And again, I'm not, they're going to look a little sparse for a bit. That's okay too. So I'll get that a little closer so you can see it. So it's a little bit sparse. That's okay. Because we're going to uh, do that again in a little bit. And I want to do these pine boughs, the branches, and the leaves first because we want these little birds to be nice and fluffy and sort of cover up. So it, it is in the right order, basically. So we're going to start with those pine boughs because these ones I think are perhaps the most intricate of any of them. So we're going to start with those pine boughs. And the next color we're going to use is a little bit of plantation pine. There's Deb. There's Miss Deb. Just saw her pop up there. Good morning. So those pine boughs, I'm using just a little bit of um, plant. Oh, good lord! Put my finger right in the paint. So a little bit of plantation pine. on my liner brush and I'm going to put a little of this in between so I'm going in between the strokes of antique green so I'm alternating between just like that is it possible I can zoom in for a second uh, bear with me so, uh -oh. I think I broke it. You broke it? Yeah, I think I broke it. So, in between. So I've got a antique green and then I've got some plantation pine and it's going in between those strokes of antique green. Just like that. Nothing too fussy. Don't worry about getting it absolutely perfect. It doesn't matter. It's just creating a little pattern and a little visual texture. That's all it's doing. Just 
just like that. So essentially we're going to have that. Now you can take um, your olive green, your margarita green, or your matcha green, whatever light colored green you've got. Mm -hmm. I know how hard it is to get certain colors, so it's we're just looking for something in the same family. I wish you could stand over your shoulder and watch you paint. Technically, that's what you're doing right now. So now you're going to just overstroke in a few places with a little of that. I'm using matcha green because that's what I have. And this is going to give those boughs just a little bit of a highlight. And I'm just tucking them in where I find space. I'm not worried about accuracy. I'm not worried about whether or not they're absolutely perfect. It doesn't matter. Um, oh, you're using a micron. Yeah. 15 knot? 15 Dynasty Micron. Just need a nice fine liner. Could you get away with a... A 10 knot will work just fine. Or whatever you're comfortable with. A rigger? A rigger will work too. Yeah. It's just whatever you're comfortable with. I'm comfortable with this Micron. I love this Micron. So, I'm just stroking in a few little highlights, basically on these little boughs. And if you find that it's still looking a little too sparse to suit you, go ahead and put in a few more. Just stroke them in. It's just going to fill it up. The other nice thing you can do, if you really want, say, like a blue spruce look, um, instead of using the antique green and the margarita and the plantation pine, look at some of the blue greens and teals. Those will work too. 123 people just watching on YouTube. Nice. So this is just a fun way to get that sort of little pine bow look. And then you do have a center vein on these little branches and I like to take just a little bit of that matcha green and just lightly stroke that in. And there we have a pine bell. Now it's still going to look a little bit rough till we clean up all of the graphite lines and whatnot but that is a really easy way to do that little piece of pine bell. So I'm going to come back to our, our holly leaves here. Is that your phone? It was my phone. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> my phone's chirping again. I thought I had turned it down. Apparently, I didn't. Error. Why is there an error? Oh. So we have a branch on this little holly leaf here. I did this the simplest way I could possibly do it. I took a little bit of thin dash faltum. <laughs> oh, there's Sheila. Hey, Sheila. I got a goodie box from Sheila this week. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start the goodie. Well, she sent me tea. Oh, right. Which, yeah. by the way, the Earl Grey is to die for. It's so good. Had a glass this morning? Or? Dominic and I had breakfast together this morning and I had a taste of hers and it was just, oh, yum. And I keep sticking my nose in the bag of hot cinnamon because it <laughs> smells so good. It smells like cinnamon hearts. <laughs> it does. It smells like cinnamon hearts, but oh my goodness, the smell is heavenly. And that pumpkin spice, oh. Can I get in closer? Sadly, no, I can't. Yeah. I, th I, I broke the zoom. He broke the zoom. So I've just used a little bit of asphaltum to put that little branch in. I'm going to just stroke in a little twig to join these leaves with a little bit of either asphaltum or one of the greens. It doesn't really matter which one. It's such a tiny line, you wouldn't be able to distinguish it anyway. So 
I've got my line in, my little branch in. There is a little curly cue over here. We'll get to that in a sec. I fixed it. He fixed it. Give me a second. It's going to look weird for a second. There we go. I fixed it. <laughs> he fixed the zoom? Yeah. Where's it going? There it is. Is that better? <laughs> a little better. I can zoom in more. Zoom in. More, more, more. Uh -uh. There you go. Okay. Oh, that's better. So I'm going to... Um... Okay. There it is. Okay. It's taking a minute for it to adjust. So this uh, set of holly leaves here is going to be shaded with a little bit of plantation pine. If you don't have plantation pine, a little bit of black green will do. Um, if you have the fluid acrylics, you can use some of the sap green. We're just going to put a shadow down the center vein of these leaves. I'm using a 3 8 angle. This is a black gold angle. That's a digital zoom, so it might be a little grainy. Yeah. I should adjust the focus, though. So I've got my center vein in. I'm going to dry this real quick so that I can finish the shading without messing this up. And then I'm going to shade underneath this forward leaf. Mm. Just need a nice little shadow in there. And then I'm going to deepen those shadings just a little. One more light float. Woo. Okay. That's all we can get. Very good. There we go. So I'm going to dry that real quick. And then I'm going to put a shadow at the base of these leaves, and this is going to accentuate that curve. Remember that curve that we created? It's going to accentuate it a little bit by putting that shadow along the base of the leaf where it connects, just like that. The zombie needs to be above. Yeah. <sighs> When I'm not working night shifts, I'll work on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a nice shadow in there. And now we're going to put a highlight on that leaf. I'm going to use a matcha green for my highlights. I keep, I thought I turned that down. Uh, maybe. Okay, there it is. It was down. I don't know why it's still doing that. Do you hit the little switch that says silent mode? Oh, that would help, wouldn't it? <laughs> Maybe. There we go. Ta -da. <laughs> Comes the dawn. <laughs> that little toggle there. Yep, the little toggle. So, I'm going to highlight these leaves. Again, with that matcha green, um, though I'm not using it full strength, I'm blending this out quite a bit because uh, I don't want this to be too, too strong. And my highlight is going to go right there on that outer edge of my leaf. And then it's going to go down that center vein as well opposite our shadow. I love the tea and the little things Sheila includes with her it's with just, wood pieces. Yeah. Well and she sent a gorgeous ornament set as a giveaway for our December 4th. I wish my son would help me with technology stuff. <laughs> so I've got my first layer of highlight on. I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to do it one more time. My mother's got to step up on me. She knows HTML. That, I don't know how she 
I managed to learn that in such a short period of time. You know what they say, necessity is the mother of invention? Yeah. Um, I, I have built every website that I've had except one. And so in that process of learning how to do that, I had an HTML for dummies book. <laughs> and it worked. And uh, so you learn a little bit of coding, it's a good thing. Me too, I'm tech challenged. <laughs> I love tech. It frustrates me no end at times, but I do love it. Uh, when I was finally able to purchase your beloved Ashvaltum, <laughs> I got crazier, so it's all your fault. My husband thanks you, my son thanks you, especially <laughs> my daughter in laws. <laughs> I love Eschvaltum. It's a great color. So there is my highlight on my leaves. I like doing things in thin layers of color. So it builds up. And then look at the dimension you get. You get this nice curve because we've got the shadows in the right places. So whenever something is curving like that, I put that shadow at the base and then the brighter colors at the point and it accentuates that curve, makes it look a li little bit more realistic. What's this? Do you have the black eraser for graphite lines in stock? I do not have any. Um, Miss Sandy yeah. has them on her website. Go check out Sandy's So go check out website. Sandy's website. So I've got my leaves done on those holly. So let's talk about that, um, that mistletoe. Again, on this one, I'm going to use a little bit of a shvaltum to put in that branch that our little bird is sitting on. Your mistletoe is no match for my toe missile. <laughs> <laughs> Any military people out there will understand that one. <laughs> so I'm going to base coat. I'm going to put another coat of this um, matcha green onto my mistletoe because it's just looking a little peaky. I took a beginner class at the community college to become a little bit more tech savvy. Really helped this old brain. You know, technology, if you don't learn something about it or understand how it functions, it can be just so frustrating. <laughs> It's never a bad idea to learn more. I'm constantly learning. <laughs> After years in, of... In, In-home networking is driving me up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nothing. You have a new piece of equipment to set up this week. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I get frustrated with the old one, so I got a new one. Oh, no. I got a new network printer for the studio, so... Oh, my God. Sorry. Why am I setting up a network printer? Because that one is... I'm going to put my fist I through it. I thought you plugged that one in. I did. It's... Um, there's a problem with that printer. I don't know what it is, but it keeps... Um, tell me I have to turn it off and turn it back on again. I get errors constantly. Ah. So I solved that problem and ordered a new one. She's giving you a job. <laughs> giving him a headache is what I'm giving him. <laughs> if it has anything to do with our network or which by the way is running smoothly <laughs> right it, now. It is working beautifully. No, I have no complaints. It's, this is a hardware problem, not a I fixed Dad's issue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what the fastest internet? <laughs> but the slowest network. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't have anything to do with what five computers in this house. Five computers? Six. Six. 
Right. There's three Six. right here. <laughs> There's three here and three upstairs. Yep. So, yes. Yeah, it's a good thing my supercomputer is handling most of the internet traffic right Thank now. God for that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we've got, I have three computers here in the studio. We have the laptop that runs the cameras, and then we have well, two... the laptop runs the stream. Yeah, it runs the stream. And then the... Um... LOL jinx yourself. Yeah. What printer did you get? Did um, you, you didn't get another Canon. Did no, you? I did not. Okay. Um, the one, this image class one I have here is a newer printer. It's not even a year old. And it's just been an endless source of frustration for me. The one that I had before this, I couldn't kill. I just literally wore it out. It was such a great printer. And this one has been just an endless source of frustration. So um, I ordered another brother like that one. <laughs> oh, yeah? Uh, but it's just strictly a black and white. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so that's going to do all your line work and yeah. so, shipping labels. Yeah, so I'm I'm excited about that, but it, it's you know it was not a cheap printer, but I don't care. I it's for the amount of work that it it does, I'm all good. Okay, so I've got my mistletoe base coated. I wanted to just make my berries a little more opaque because they weren't quite full enough to suit me. That's about the right number of computers. <laughs> it's about the, yeah, around here it is. So I'm going to shade again. I'm going to use a little bit of that plantation pine to shade the mistletoe. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the holly. It gets a float at the base where it joins the stem. And this is just going to accentuate that curve. That's all this does. And it's not a strong float. It's just a little one. It does two things. It separates these leaves a little bit and it accentuates the curve. So I'm going to dry that. And we have two little leaves up here. I'm going to show you how to do those too. I have the slowest and most expensive internet possible. <laughs> Why? Why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> Some places that's all that's available. Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing the same thing to these little leaves. I'm putting that float right at the base of the leaf where it joins the stem. So it covers about half of the leaf. So I'm gonna let that dry for a second. Now I'm going to put a float up the center vein of this leaf with that plantation pine. Now the nice part is, because this is such a, oof, that didn't come out very well. Not a very pretty float. There we go, that's better. Six or seven computers for four of us, not counting phones. Yep. Oh, don't even go there. I've got the iPad Pro and iPad Mini and the iPhone. Yep. So, and then Dad's got a tablet, Dominic's got a tablet. <laughs> oh yeah, this house is teched out. Yeah. And then all the Wi-Fi based uh, smart plugs. And Dad and his Googles. Dad and his Googles, you yeah. know. We, ha we have Googles that control the lights in this house. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a network nightmare for yeah. me. <laughs> it's a nightmare, period. There's a reason why I have a couple hotspots set up. Yeah. But they all work on the same network, so it's, it's just to alleviate some stress off the main router. So I'm putting a highlight on the tips of these little leaves with a float of that matcha green. Easy peasy. Do you have spectrum too? No. 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 It's spectrum. Oh, we have uh, fiber op. Oh, I see. Yep. Spectrum's so, a company that provides yeah. internet, I'm guessing. So there we have our leaves are all shaded, all highlighted. Nice part about these matcha green leaves is you can take a little bit of warm white 
and mix it with your matcha green, just enough to change the value of it. And that can be your highlight color. And it's just a little float opposite that shading. Nothing too elaborate, because these leaves are fairly small. We just want to change the value of them a touch. It's not a big deal on this one. And that's it. It's super simple. Shade, highlight, shade, highlight. Nothing over the top. So let's talk about berries. Blueberries. <laughs> Blueberries. <laughs> Blueberries aren't blue. They're purple. <laughs> I'm sorry. Inside joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could grab with stronger language. It's much stronger language. Um, <laughs> Purple. That was my thought for the day the other day. <laughs> was it? Yeah. I'm a lady with the vocabulary of a well-educated sailor. Ah. <laughs> uh, is your studio in your house or in a separate building? It's in the house. In my house. It's the entire lower level of our house. Better watch out that Hal doesn't take over your home. Hal is Windows based. Everything else is Linux based in here. So. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> Hal's not taking over nothing. Yep. No sound. No, we're good. Somebody got sound? No sound? It's on Facebook? I don't know. It was YouTube. All right. She might be further behind, too. Oh, that could be. Yeah. So I'm taking a little bit of Bahama Blue. I love Bahama Blue. <laughs> it's my favorite <laughs> color. And I'm putting a shadow... <laughs> on our little berries. Mm. Like so. Jessica knows me too well. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> are, you, are you using glitter on Renee's favorite bird? <laughs> I know, chickadees. Chickadees. I love chickadees. What's wrong with chickadees? Well, after they make their sound, there's a shotgun blast usually followed with the after. <laughs> chickadee <laughs> Uh, they were bad in Winnipeg. Oh, wait till you hear the Blue Jays around here in the wintertime. I can deal with Blue Jays. Really? Yeah. You have a problem with chickadee dee dee. Well, chickadee dee, freaking four o'clock in the morning is different. <laughs> Blue Jays actually wait till everybody's awake. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm going to deepen the shading on those. Um, berries. I wanted to show you something. You notice when I put that highlight or that shadow in that there is a small space in there between the edge of the berry and where that shading starts. I leave a very thin gap. There's a reason for it. So I'm going to thin out some asphaltum and I'm going to float right over top of that same shadow just a little leaving that tiny little gap just like I did the first time. That helps uh, create the illusion that it's an orb as opposed to just a round surface with a dark side and a light side. So it helps us create that orb shape. And then we're going to take a little bit of titanium white. And because our base color was warm white, Titanium white is a little bit brighter, and we're going to put a dot highlight right there. And that's our berries. Those little mistletoe berries. It doesn't seem like much until you get it done, but that little bit of bright titanium white will make it look more like an orb as opposed to just a circle with a dark side and a light side. So I'm going to dry that so I don't get my fingers in it. We're going to do the uh, the berries for the um, for the pine bough next. Now I used a little bit of scarlet, I believe. Oh, maybe it was red alert. I <laughs> can't remember, but either one will work. So I went with a more orangey red to base coat these. 
uh, and you'll see why in just a second because I want them to really stand out against that red background. So yeah, it was scarlet. And I'm covering all of the white. I want all of that white covered. But having that little bit of white underneath really makes that red stand out nicely against that red background that we already have in place. I just gotta make sure that I cover all of the white. So Scarlet, Red Alert, either one will work just fine. I like Scarlet though. Scarlet's got that heat. So I'm going to dry those. I always like that little bit of white underneath red. The holly berries, we're going to use, um, I'm going to grab some Tuscan red for those, because I love that blue red. There we go. We have allotments in the neighborhood where chickens are kept. <laughs> I can deal with chickens. Poultry, no spiteful creature God ever poured breath into. Yeah. I can deal with chickens. <laughs> Chickens are good. Yep. So I'm going to shade these berries with a little bit of thinned soft black. Remember the, the color that we used to shade the outside edge? So we're going to shade our berries with that. And I'm putting my shadow towards the lower right side of these berries. Facebook is aggravating so much. I'm upset that I'm missing so much. What? And then, again, I'm coming just in from the edge. I'm not taking it all the way to the edge of the berry. Oh, shit, it's 2.30. There we go. Renee's got to run upstairs and put yeah, his... I also want to be here just in case that sound cuts out well, again. It'll wait. Well, not if you're trying to teach somebody if there's no sound. <laughs> no, I meant the butter chicken can wait. <laughs> Apparently it can't. So now we're going to highlight, again, we're going to use a little bit of warm white for this and a very thinned out warm white. So I don't want it full strength. And I'm going to start my highlight where that shadow stops. And again, that one comes in a little bit from the edge. Eek. There we go. And then our highlight on that, again, is a little bit of warm white. Just like so. And there we have berries. And then we're going to do these ones on the holly berries. Now I'm using a little bit of Tuscan red. I want these berries to be nice and bright. Now I'm watching the the Facebook live feed and it seems to be okay. I haven't seen any issues with it. Not on my end anyway. So I'm watching it right on my tablet so it's watching it from Facebook. So I'm putting Tuscan Red on these berries. I love Tuscan Red. It's a blue red. It's one of the cooler blue reds out there. And I love when you put it over top of white. Look how bright you get it over top of that bright white base coat. You get a nice rich red. Very pretty. So I'm going to let that dry. And we're almost there. We're going to finish off a couple of uh, little things, finish these berries, and then we're ready to paint our little birds.
These guys are fun to paint. They're so much fun to paint. So again, I'm going to use a little bit of um, soft black to shade these berries. Surprise Happy Meal. Surprise Happy Meal? I don't know. Oh, it's from Under Armour Canada. Okay. Never mind. Not so much Happy Meal. Well, it is for your dad. <laughs> So, uh, I'm going to shade these little berries. Ooh, too much water in my brush. I'll be right yep. back. I got dot outside right now. So. Okay. And, oh my goodness. I cannot get this to load. There we go. That's better. So again, I'm coming just in from the edge of that berry, just slightly. It's very tiny space, but it's there nonetheless. There we go. And I'm going to dry that, and then I'm going to put the highlight on the opposite side. Again, I'm using a little bit of warm white for this, and I'm blending it out quite a lot because I don't want this color full strain. I want it a little on the transparent side for this. A little too transparent. Didn't have any paint. There we go. Took a little artistic license with the light sourcing on this one, but that's okay. And then again, we're going to use a little of that warm white, just a dot for our highlight. It just needs a light impact point. That's all I'm using it for. And there are our berries. So I'm going to dry all three of these, make sure they're nice and dry before I start working on these little buds. And there's a bunch of little details that we're going to do too, but we'll finish all of that up right at the end. So these little birds actually are pretty straightforward. I'm going to um, give myself a clean palette here for this next part so that I don't end up with my hands and my elbows and my arms. In, in paint because that's happened often. The two colors we're going to work with are titanium white, well three colors, sorry, a little bit of warm white, and some asphaltum. And the steps for this are pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to use a three-eighths angle and I'm going to use a quarter inch rake which is this one here and our 15 knot liner so we only need three brushes for this next part and this part is just this is just fun because it's really quite um, user-friendly so we're going to get our quarter inch rake nice and wet and we're going to pull out some warm white and we want it kind of milky a little on the thin side and we're going to load that rake like this oh my gosh of course remember why I wasn't going to huh. so I'm going to pull a little of that paint out and we're not going to be very kind to this brush. We're going to stand it right up on the ferrule, straight up and down, and we're going to twist. So press down and twist so it opens up the brush just like that. It's going to create a fan. 
And so now our brush is open and hairy. And then we're going to take that rake and then starting at the top of this little bird, we're just going to lightly stroke in and follow the shape of that bird with the rake brush. So it's just going to create some fine little hairs, just like that. It's okay if you go up onto the hair or onto the head, and you're going to let those little fine hairs come down, just like that. So we've got some nice little layers. They're short strokes and irregular. Do you see how he's starting to fluff up? Much like we did when we did those gnomes the other day. We're just creating some texture over top of that gray. Finally got in. So here is our fat little bird. So let's do that again on this one. So you pick up some paint some water glaze in the brush, press down on the ferrule, open it up so that it's got lots of tooth. And then you're going to start just lightly stroking in those little fine hairs and textures. Oh, well, there's a good question. How do you determine whether to use asphaltum or soft black to shade? I use soft black because I want a darker value and I use soft black predominantly on reds because it's a red-based black. It has a, a, an undertone of purple or dioxin it. Asphaltum is my everything shading color. I mean, absolutely everything except black. I use it on everything. It's more of a toning than anything else. Is that brush going to go back to normal afterwards? Yes, it will. Once I clean it, it will go back. So, you notice that I'm following the shape of that fat little bird so that all those little hairs create the look that he is round or rotund. <laughs> rotund. He's rotund. And I'm letting those hairs come down like that. And I'm not worried about getting that over top of those open spaces because we're going to fill that in with black. You make it look so easy. It's a very light touch. And again, I'm not kind to this brush. Little short strokes. Uh, where can you get the sleds? I have some on the website at tracymoreau.net. We have them in sets of three. They are also available from stockade.ca. And you can get them from plumperty.com. Oh. So they will have a fat, fluffy little bird. I like that, you know, some of those hairs come off the sides. Just makes him look fluffy. And the same goes for this little guy. I'm going to... Yeah, wrong mouse. Ooh, a little too much on that one. There we go. So it is a very light touch. I'm just sort of tickling the surface with the tips of these bristles. There we go. Yeah, we have a bunch of gifties to give away so wheel of names. the wheel of names so we've got our first layer of fluff on here on our little guys Bitty, I'm going to dry this real quick now you can do this two ways I like this method personally but you can do it a bunch of different ways. Rinse this brush out. Renee Howard. Renee Howard is a winner. Renee, go to the website and click on the little speech bubble in the lower right hand corner of the 
homepage and send us your shipping information. Um, and I will say this, if we do not receive shipping information, anything that is unclaimed just goes in a bin. Mm -hmm. And then um, we give it away again. Then we give it away on the 12 days of Christmas. Because <laughs> um, we do have quite a few. I think there's probably seven or eight of them over there that were unclaimed throughout the year and a half. So we just save them up. If they don't get claimed, so if you don't send us your information, we can't send it to you. So, yeah, we're... just saying. Just saying. So, I've got a little bit of thin dish faultum on this angle, and so I'm going to put. Is she there? Little. Oh yeah, she is. You do. See, I'm just putting these little floats in, kind of like scales, like that on the chest and the belly of this bird. I'm gonna do the same thing on this little guy over here. Just like that. It's a little U. And this is just going to help create, and there's a little wing here, so I'm gonna float underneath that. This is just going to help us create a little texture on the chest of our bird. So, there, like layers of feathers, I guess. So it's just a simple little float, and then I've got a little shadow along the edge of that wing, like so. So those little floats help create this texture. So when you look at this little guy, you see how he looks like he's got little feathers? That's what that little shadow does. Just helps us create that. And then while I've got the Ushfaltum on my brush, we're going to shade and highlight the feathers, tail feathers. Carrie Henderson. Carrie Henderson has won another one of those prizes. So Carrie, go to the home page on my website, click on the little speech bubble in the lower right hand corner, and uh, it will give you a message form, fill it out, put your shipping information in there, and we will get that out to you on Monday. So tail feathers. I want a nice shadow at the base of these tail feathers, just using a little bit of a shfaltum. And I'm coming about one third <coughs> Excuse me. up the tail feathers. And I totally messed that up. So one third up the tail feathers. There we go, that's better. And then same with the little guys here. I'm gonna put a nice little, oh my goodness. Let's try that again, Trace. Okay. And Miss Laura V. And Laura V. Laura Villegas. Is it Villegas? Yeah. Laura V. We didn't forget about you. No, we did not. She she had issues with chatting or something. Yeah, like that, she's right? had a hard time getting into the chat. So there you go. And, and you need two more names. And I need two more names because we've got uh, some deck work graphite paper to send out, and there's always some uh, little extra goodies in the envelopes. So so I've put a float of asphaltum right at the base of the tail feathers right here and now I'm going to dry these so and then we're going to highlight those tail feathers while we're at it I just want to deepen this one it's not quite dark enough to suit me like so. <laughs> so I'm going to dry these, make sure all those shadings are dry, and I'm going to grab a little bit of warm white and blend that out, and we're going to highlight the tips of these tail feathers. 
do you need my shipping or do you still have it already? Who's that, Laura? Yeah. Uh, send it to us. I mean, we may have it, but it means we have to go looking for it. So. Yeah, if you send it through the website, it's the best way for us to get it. Yeah. I mean, we have it all on the server, but then we have to go looking for it, so. <laughs> you said it out loud, and then you realized you said, yeah, uh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I said, bless you, and yeah, it was me who sneezed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, So I'm just putting a little float of warm white and then I'm just chisel blending it a little bit so that I get a nice transition. And just so you know, chisel blending is just essentially putting in a float and then using the chisel edge of the brush just to tap and pull to put your highlight on. So we've got a nice little highlight at the tips of our feathers. Robin Miles. Robin Miles. I think she's on Facebook. I think the last time I saw her on... Robin Miles? Mm -hmm. Yep. So Robin, go to the website front page, lower right hand corner, there's a little speech bubble. Click on that and send me your shipping information so that we can get your deck work, graphite paper, and some other goodies out to you. So there we have a nice little highlight on the ends of our feathers. Is there a substi uh, substitute? Substitute for the ashvaltum color. I have yet to find one that works as well, um, but you can use like a burnt umber or a dark chocolate brown. You just need a nice dark brown. Um, those will work fine too for shading and whatnot, but uh, I've yet to find a color that truly replaces my Eschvaltum. So now we need to put some highlight colors on our little buds and I'm going to do that with some titanium white. So we're putting a lighter value yet again over top of our cobblestone and our warm white and our little bit of Eschvaltum there. So I'm loading up my rake with titanium white only one sheet in here? Yes, but it's one big sheet. <laughs> oh, are, we're talking like a two foot by two foot square? or? Uh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. it's a nice big sheet. They folded it up nice and... Yep. So I'm going over top of all of that warm white with little short strokes of titanium white. And I'm following the same shape that I did the first time. Do you have white graphite paper on your website? I do not, no. But you can get it from deckwork.com. And uh, white graphite is also on cdwood.com. So I'm just putting very light little strokes of that titanium white right over top. And look how fluffy he gets. I just love how they just get fluffy. And Linda Duff. Linda Duff is the winner of the other one. So there is graphite paper coming to you. Uh, just make sure that you send us your shipping information. Um, connect to, to us through the website, please. Um, I don't often check Messenger simply because there's way too many messages on there that... <laughs> get lost in translation. Well, they get lost in translation and a lot of the time it's, I never know what's a valid uh, Facebook account. So if you have a question, um, about the website, about a pattern, if you send it through that little speech widget, the little speech bubble widget that's on my website, it comes directly to me. So I can answer them quickly. Um, yeah, I think that's all the giveaways. Yeah. So. Cool. So that little bit of titanium white, I'm going to do this again, only I'm going to do it with my liner brush to put in a few extra strokes. 
Stockade question mark? Stockade.ca. Uh, it's a great craft supply place uh, here in Canada. They they ship all over the place. Their shipping is reasonable. Their service is impeccable, and their selection is out of this world. Oh, I think that was in reference to the white graphite paper. Yes, Stockade.ca carries it as well. Good. Yeah. So I put a few strokes of that titanium. I'm going to dry this real quick. Can you send a picture to the speech bubble? The speech uh, bubble on your website? I think so. I think you can put an attachment in. I think so. Yep. Not 100% sure on that, but let me check. Yep. Click the speech bubble. No. No? Can't send images. Okay. It's just text. Sorry. But if you have a question and you want to, and once it's emailed to me and I respond, you can send me a, a, a photo through my email. So our next step is to put in some final highlights, and I like doing that with a liner because I like to put a few little brighter strokes to make these guys look really fluffy. And all I'm doing is just following that same pattern of the strokes on this bird. So if it's shaped to make them look nice and round. So I'm just using a liner brush to put in a few little extra strokes. And it's just titanium white. Ah, broke it. I'm breaking things. Is that your phone? Yep. Okay. Oh, so, no, it was my phone. I know, but it was mine. Mm -hmm. Yep. So all of those little strokes of titanium white, this is where you get to make them look even fluffier. So if you want to add little curlies coming off the edges of him or down over his toes, that's fine. So I love how he just looks so fluffy by doing this. And fluffy is, fluffy is good. Fluffy is awesome. Fluffy. He's just cute. Send my mailing information in contact us. I hope you... That's fine. Yep, contact us. We'll be fine too. Yep. Yep. We'll get it. Just anything that you do through the website comes directly uh, to either Renee or to me through the server. Um, just messenger I don't get to check it as often as I probably should but I honestly I, I don't have the time <laughs> I'm too busy designing stuff and I don't like to let questions late just sit there so um, if they come directly to me I check and answer them on the regular so and don't be afraid to remind me if you haven't gotten a response I don't take offense. Sometimes I just get too busy. So those little strokes, those little extra strokes of white, they just make him look a little fluffier. And I like that. And he's going to get real cute here in a second. So, so I just tuck those in here and there, nice little short strokes so that they overlap where the shading that we put in just makes him look a little fluffy what is the most opaque r opaque red in the decor line the most opaque red probably country red or tomato red but if you're looking for an opacity chart there's one on the um, free educational download section on my website you can go there and download one and it has a listing of the Americana colors and their transparency and their opacity give you an idea of what kind of coverage you're going to get from certain colors, which is never bad information to have. Your customer service is awesome, I have to say. Well, that's nice to know. We try. <laughs> <laughs> we do occasionally drop the ball, but we do try to make up for it as best we can. So um, everything that ships out, the minute an order is filled, it's set up to automatically email you. 
So if you haven't received one, check your spam file. That's sometimes where they end up. So, Can you achieve the fluffy look with a different brush? Yeah, if you don't have a rake, you can use a liner brush, layers and layers. Um, the other thing you can use, too, is a, um, a wave brush. I know I have one here somewhere. Um, we have this one. It's called a filbert wave or a flat wave will work too. You see how it's got a serrated edge? It's not a smooth round edge. You can do the same thing. Just you know, press them right down like that. Push to open it up. You can see you don't get a smooth edge and it gives you a nice fluffy coarse edge and it will give you little fine hairs too. Works like a hot dam. So, you know, if it's... There's a cat. There is a cat, Miss Soot. What are you doing? She's deaf as a post, that cat. How so, can we find out if we won something on a video we didn't get a chance to watch yet? Oh, I don't know, because we only hold it for a couple of weeks, so... We just fill them and send them out. We don't keep a list, so if something goes unclaimed within a couple of weeks, it goes in the bin. So the beak on this little tyke, these little fellas, is just a little bit of antique gold. And a liner brush. At the end of every video, we use, or every live, we usually reiterate who the winners were so yeah exactly if you go to when yeah, but if it's more than a couple of weeks old yeah yeah we don't uh we can't hang on to them and i can't chase them chase them so <laughs> <laughs> it's i just don't so you better watch to find out <laughs> if you send us your information i mean honestly it's not that many really yeah you know, but yeah. They, With the amount of lives we do, we do, what, 52 a year? 52 a year, so it, we only have six or eight in, you know, over a year, we, so. We used to do two lives a week. Yeah. And that got a lot. It, that's a lot, <laughs> especially with everything else I do, so um, yeah. we keep it to one. So I base the beak with a little bit of antique gold. And then to highlight it, I'm going to put a little bit of saffron, or you can just mix a little bit of white with, with the antique gold. That'll work too. I just need a, a lighter yellow to put a little highlight on the top of the beak. I have a bottle of translucent white in the media paint. Yep. I haven't used it yet. When would I use it? It's a great highlighting color because it's very translucent so if you're highlighting over top of something you need a white like i use white for berries all the time the translucent white works really well so i'm just putting a little tiny stroke of a highlight on the beak it's all it really needs it's a teeny tiny little triangle of color and by the time i'm done you're not going to see much of it so so we now have to um work on our black cap so i got a little bit of lamp black this is where these little guys really take shape and i'm going to use a round a very small round i think i still have one yeah i've got a number two here and i'm going to uh, base in the cap of my little chickadee. Oh, here's a good one. Hmm. Will you possibly be creating a pattern with these same chickadees for a canvas or larger surface? Absolutely. I've got a couple of drawings on the table as it's, <laughs> as we sit right now. So, and I'm working on a blue jay too. I'm I'm a little obsessed with the little fat birds right now. So, I'm just going to base in i'm going up close to the eyeball here get it nice and tight to that eyeball that 
phone is going nuts. Yeah, I'm not sure why. <laughs> it usually does. <laughs> so, um, and I'm going to do the same thing underneath here. And just put that little, little bib Don't in. Don't even think about it, cat. Don't even know. <laughs> no. Soot is being... Don't do it. Don't do it. So that little bit of black, again, I'm just lightly stroking it in, so I fill in that red. Oh, so it's in the house. What? Do not lay down on the keyboard. And if you do, at least <laughs> make sure it's not touching anything. There. So, going to do the same thing for each of these little guys. Just taking a little bit of care around that eyeball so that I don't have to go back in and touch a whole bunch of stuff up. What? And Miss Sweat is making a nuisance of herself. It did, really? <laughs> Of all the keys to hit. What? Oh, no. <laughs> I told you, she's computer savvy. She just shut off his monitor. <laughs> you brat. <laughs> Miss Soot owns the place, apparently. Hey, no, don't walk across the keyboard again. So I'm just going to lightly stroke in that cap. I'm just using lamp black, and I'm going to do the same thing on that, again, with that little bib. And I'm letting some of that black just sort of brush down onto the white, just a little. Like so. Don't do it. And I'm going to do the same thing on this little fella here. Yeah. I do like these little guys. The little chickadees are just so cute. The perfect little winter bird. I thought I just thought that this surface, um, one, it's an adorable surface, that little vintage style sled. And then um, you can't really go wrong with chickadees. Chickadees are just so cute. Very festive little bird. What, are you going to walk across me to try and get to the laptop? So you can walk across that? Oh, she'd just nap on that. <laughs> yeah, it's warm enough. But it's getting pretty toasty, too. Really? So. <laughs> Not only walk across the keyboard, she planted a foot and then stretched. <laughs> So again, I'm not, we're not talking about like a heavy duty base coat here. I've just sort of filled in some space. And I just did that with that little round. So I'm going to dry this. Could. I could. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to make this guy look a little fluffy now. A little more fluffy. This in you. So it's being a pest. And if you can't. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but she's purring like crazy. Oh, and what? She's very talkative. So we're going to do the wings on this little guy. And we're going to come back to our base coat. Remember that cobblestone? And I'm using a 3 8 angle for this. And this is just such a super simple way to do this. I'm going to load it up as if I'm going to float, and then I'm going to press down on my brush on the chisel edge and pull back. Just like that. And I'm going to do that for each feather on that wing. Just like that. So press down, pull back. Just like that. 
And then with that dirty brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white on the tip of the brush. And I'm going to just tap in those little feathers at the top of the wing. And then again with the dirty brush, I'm going to pick up a little titanium white and I'm going to highlight the tips of those other feathers, just like that. So tap and pull back. Pick up a little Whoa. titanium. Laura Villegas. Question. Shoot. I'll be participating in a craft fair locally mm -hmm. on December 4th. Yep. Uh, when you'll be doing your special Christmas live. <laughs> I will be loading it up on my phone to watch and hopefully I'll have service to be a part of <laughs> that throughout. But if I can't keep a connection, will I still be eligible for the giveaways? Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. If not, I totally understand. <laughs> I thought I'd ask because I really don't want to miss it. <laughs> I never miss a single live. I know. <laughs> uh, and I don't want to start now if I can help it. So I'm just putting a little shadow <laughs> underneath my wing, like so, with a, just a little float of Ashvaltum. So now I've got feathers, I've got a shadow, he's got wings. He looks a little dirty. He looks a little dirty. <laughs> it's all good. So now we're going to come back to that liner brush and we're going to pick up a little bit of that lamp black. This looks easier than the chickadee on the Give Thanks cup. Oh really? And I think the one on the, the one on the Give Thanks Cup is even simpler than this. <laughs> so I'm just going to pull, remember what we did with the finer lines? I'm going to do the same thing with some lamp black, just so we've got some nice fine fluffy lines coming off of our black cap. And I'm going to do the same thing on the top of his cap with that liner. I want nice little fluffy lines, just like that. So I'm just effectively pulling out some little fine strokes. I'm going to do the same thing to this little fella here. I need some glaze in that brush. It's so lots of little layers, but they're simple layers. Is it possible to just take a break? Because you might be on holiday for six to eight weeks and then come back at the level you left off. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can cancel at any time and then come back and I believe you would still keep your... Yeah, I think they do. I think they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and speaking of which, uh, members, if you're thinking about it, um, if some of the members, well, all of the members, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you could go to that little spot on my website and click on the speech bubble and send us your shipping information. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You should do it. Um, yeah, you <laughs> should do it. Because um, we've got a little surprise going out to um, some of the members. Well, all of the members, eventually. If you're um, a member, send us your shipping out. Well. Yeah, uh, because we have something special for you guys. Especially those who have been in for a long time. Yeah, if you've been with us for that six month mark is coming up yeah and so we have uh we have a little gift for you guys and we're going to have that gift for everyone that stays with us that long and then we have another gift for the ones that are with us for a full year so yeah um so yeah if you're thinking about it um just put that in the subject line group member mm -hmm. and uh let us know your shipping information because we're trying to build up a um a database for all our members so that we can uh you send know, you cool stuff. send you cool stuff. So, because we got cool stuff to send. 
So I've got my little bird fluffing up really nicely. I got one more to do here. And it's just, you know, these little lines coming off of the edges of these feathers just makes him look a little fluffier. And then I'm going to, um, I'm also going to do this with titanium white too because I don't want this to look um, blocky. So I need that to be nice and soft and a little more organic feeling. So I'm going to do that with the titanium white. A little bit of titanium white. And this is where he really gets fluffy. Some shadows or oh, some highlights. Some little highlights that we add. You know, I can't believe it's been six months already. I know. Has it been si only six months? Almost, yeah. Yeah. Since we started the membership group. It's uh, going on. We're on year number two for the lives, right? Yeah. Wow. I know. Hard to believe. Started off as a. What was it? It was a you. Well, I did at uh, charity. Yeah, you thing. did that charity live stream. For the group in Brazil. Yeah. And that's what set this whole thing off. <laughs> yeah. And then I thought, you know what? That was really fun. <laughs> make it a weekly thing. or. You know, we thought about how we were going to do it. Mm -hmm. and it's just kind of grown from there. So I'm just stroking in a little bit of titanium white in a few places just to, you know, brighten things up a little bit, make it look a little more fluffy. I also want a couple of little... Where are we to sign up? On our YouTube channel. Yep. So you... Tracy, just type in Tracy Moreau into the search engine and on YouTube and yep. it'll take you there. Hopefully you're on a laptop because yep. for some reason the iPhone and iPad app... Yeah, they just don't work that well. They don't work that well and you can't find the join button. Yep. So you got to look for a blue join button. And hopefully you've already clicked the red subscribe button. <laughs> but do both. Yeah. If We're good with both. The option so, is yours. I've got all of that bright stuff in. So we now need to give this little guy an eyeball. Oi. He needs an eyeball. So I'm going to use the end of my brush. I'm going to use the end of my rigger for this. And I'm going to dip into some lamp black. And in the center of that white circle, I'm going to put a dot of black. And I'm going to dry these because with my luck, I'll put my fingers right in them. I have a knack. If there's wet paint, I'm going to have my fingers, the elbow, or my sweater in it. That's just the way it works with me. And it is sweater season. I've been in a sweater every day since the end of September. And now we can start adding some of those fun little details. Because right now they look kind of, they're cute and all, but they need to be cuter. So I need those eyeballs to dry. So while those eyeballs are drying, let's come down and finish out these leaves and all of these little details. I like doing that with um, my 15 aught. And I'm going to start with this little guy over here. Um, I want to finish out these little leaves.
Charge? Have we got sound back? Yes. Oh, good. I think we got sound back. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so I'm just putting a little float. Yeah, we lost sound for a few minutes there. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Is Tracy just tired of talking? <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh... So I was just talking about the line work, detail work, and whatnot. I'm going to put a little highlight on our eyeballs. You're back. Oops. Hey, there we go. So a little dot of either warm white or titanium white to highlight his little eyeballs. Blame soot. We could. We could. <laughs> hey, stop walking across the keyboard. So <laughs> I did, however, I don't know if you guys heard this, but I missed a leaf. So there's a little leaf right here that was in the line drawing. I'd even traced it on, but for whatever reason, I did not base coat it. So, I'm just going to put a little color in. I knocked paint off. So, I'm going to dry that really quick. You put you in your basket. You brat. There you go. And then I'm going to shade said leaf with a little bit of plantation pine. Oh, we got closed captioning. On the Facebook, yeah. I didn't realize that. And then I'm going to highlight it on the tip with just a little of that matcha green. Apparently she doesn't want to stay in her bed. No. <laughs> no, go away. <laughs> uh, what, what color did you use for the outline of the leaves? It's just a little bit of thinned matcha green. And then I'm going to... Oh my goodness, what a bossy bit of goods she is. And then I'm just going to use a little of that matcha green, like that, in there. There we go. I think somebody asked where do the members put their information? Uh, when you go to the front page, the home page on my website, the little, speech bubble. little speech bubble. There should be like a red dot in the lower right hand corner. It's got a little speech bubble in it. Just click on that and uh, Send us a message with your information. Just make sure you put uh, member in the uh, subject line so we and know. We will cross reference with our members list. Yep. And, um, <laughs> yep. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And that, that way we'll be able to put you all in the, in the database. Okay, so we've got our little guys. I think these are so cute. His feet. We forgot about their feet. They have toes. No, little pitter patters. Little, yeah, they have little toes. I took a little bit of um, antique gold, and it's they're so simple. They're just three little strokes, like so. I'm sorry. Like that. <laughs> toes. I can't help but say this. <laughs> <laughs> but those chickadees look like they've seen some. <laughs> 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 They've seen stuff. <laughs> they all look like, oh man, they all got the thousand yard stare. <laughs> <laughs> so then I've got just, there are three little toes. Just like that. They need counseling. <laughs> <laughs> Is there trauma centers for, <laughs> for chickadees? chickadees? Okay, so next we need to finish these guys off and 
we're almost at that stage. So I'm going to take uh, my fugly brush, fugly brush. Veronica hates it when I call it that. <laughs> of course she does. What the hell is a fugly brush? <laughs> so I'm just thinning out a little bit of titanium white you with send her one. with my fugly brush. Oh, I sent her a photograph of mine all painted up and the whole bit. But send her one. Yeah. Oh, send her the fugly brush. Send her a fugly brush all bedazzled. Yep. All fugly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got my three little guys here. I'm just going to push them together for this part. Make life simple. I'm going to take my fugly brush loaded with titanium white and we're going to spatter. You can do a little or a lot. That's entirely up to you. I kind of like it with a bit more. Representing snowflake. Because it kind of looks like snow. I don't know. I just think he's fun. You got a snowflake stencil on this one? Or no? I don't. Um, you don't have any stencil on this one. I don't have a stencil on this one. I went with stamps this time around. Um, but if you don't have, like I said, if you don't have any of these wooden snowflakes, or, and I love these, I just absolutely freaking love these. These are just awesome. These are uh, the snowflakes from Southern Ridge Trading. These are uh, laser cut chipboard. They're freaking phenomenal. I want to show you how to paint these. I just love these. I think they're absolutely amazing. Um, there are, I, I think, 18 per sheet. They're really, really delicate. They're absolutely gorgeous. And they're super easy to work with. So I've got two sizes. This is the one inch and this is the three quarter. I'm going to show you how to paint these. I take a little bit of warm white on a sponge dauber. And then you're just going to tap the color on with the sponge dauber. Now I don't cut these out. I leave them in the in the frame. When I paint them it's so much simpler than trying to paint them one by one. You're sold out. And I, I am sold out of these. <laughs> However, um, those didn't last long. No, they are available from chipboard.ca. And you can do the same thing to the bigger ones. Just tap the color on with the sponge. And then you're going to grab a little bit of matte medium. I'm going to dry these real quick. I'm going to grab a little bit of matte medium. Renee hates this part. Glitter. Um, and no. same thing, sponge dauber. Take a little bit of matte medium and just tap a little matte medium onto the snowflake. I love this stuff. Southern Ridge. Yep. It's called Chipboard, C H I P B O R E R D, chipboard.ca. So I've got a little matte medium on there and I'm going to use a little bit of glamour dust. Now <laughs> I'm being lazy because ordinarily I would put paper or something underneath this, but I'm not doing it today. Now so, it's going to get all over the dog and the cat. Yeah. It's okay. So I've got a little bit of glitter on. I love how these snowflakes, they're just flipping awesome. Okay, I'm going to scoop up the glitter. Oh, wow, really far behind with the chat on YouTube here. <laughs> uh, there. Could you explain how the membership works after the class? Yeah, we can definitely yeah, absolutely. talk about the membership program after the class. So, um, now we've got these fabulous glittery snowflakes. Which I love these. I freaking love these. Um, and then you can just snip them out. Renee, it'll be in your beard. That's the other thing I'm worried about. <laughs> he could use a little sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> so just all you have to do is just snip them out with a pair of scissors. And then I like to... Oops, there we go. Uh, oh. 
So my jar of media gesso is gooey and sticky. Is that okay? It actually, media gesso is super thick and super sticky, but if you find it hard to work with, just put a few drops of water in it and give it a good stir. So I'm just snipping out my snowflakes. I love these, they're just so beautiful. And I'm down, this is my last, last sheet. I don't even have any. <laughs> Although I have a ton of them ordered. It's the only way to pay for the membership through YouTube. Yes. Yes. Okay, so we've got um, six snowflakes, and as luck have, would have it, we only need two fur. So, this is what I like doing. I like to take a little bit of matte medium. I'm going to use the brush for this, not the sponge. Well, I'll use the other sponge dauber. There's a little smaller one on the other side. I just don't want any paint in it. And then you have to decide where you're going to put these snowflakes. So I'm going to put one down here. So I'm just going to put a little puddle of matte medium there. And I'm going to put one up here on the top of my sled, like so. So I'm going to put the small one up there. <laughs> My three-year-old grandson was watching your last live with me, and now he says the word freaking. <laughs> well, considering the alternative? Yeah, considering the alternative, that's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got uh, Snowflake on this one, and... This little guy, I want one up here. I'm gonna put the small one up top. I like the matte medium because it dries perfectly clear and it dries dead flat so you don't get any shiny bits. And then I'm gonna take my big snowflake. So even if it goes past the edge of your snowflake, that's okay. Put it in frame, there you go. Yeah. And then this little guy. Can you just use glue if you don't have matte medium? Absolutely, you can use glue. Just make sure that it's one that's going to dry clear. And so I want two up top on this little one. So I'm going to put my bigger one up top, like so, and the smaller one down here, like so. Super easy. So your favorite glue, again, this is an adhesive as well, so I use matte medium for flipping everything. Sometimes the PG becomes PG-13. Yeah, yeah, occasionally. Occasionally. <laughs> I do try to keep the, uh, the linguistics acceptable. <laughs> the colorful language. <laughs> Which, yeah, from time to time, though, it slips a little. Yeah. But we do try to maintain a sense of decorum. Yes. So there is our little guys. Now, uh, one of the things that I did for this that I really, really like was I took a pair of edging scissors and this is just a little bit of watercolor paper. I took about an inch and a half of watercolor paper and I took edging scissors and just snipped off one end so that it had a little bit of a decorative finish. And then I broke out my gold paint pen and I just put a line of gold along the edge, like so. <laughs> Easy peasy, nothing major. I just wanted to um, put a little, little interest on it. I don't know, I have a thing about tags. I, I've noticed that the other day. I'm, every teacup's got tags on it. <laughs> I don't know why, but... I can count on one hand how many times I've dropped the F bomb on a live. I can too. Yeah. I can in fact I can do it on pretty good for me. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can do it on one hand, one finger. You dropped an F bomb. I did. Yes, once. Oh. Once. I, I don't often I don't like the word, so I did. Right. That video got flagged on YouTube. Yep, yeah, it did. Because we said there was no cursing, and then there was, and yeah, we had that one lied. that one little f bomb on there. Yeah. Well, mine was not 
that bad. And I caught myself before I actually said the whole thing, but it just sort of, yeah, I don't do that. I think I do. I can curse like a, a sailor, but... <laughs> Yeah, I just military family. I prefer not to. <laughs> I, I have to be pretty PO'd, usually. So I'm going to use the word joy because, I don't know, I love the word joy. I'm using these little mini stamps. Um, you can get these almost anywhere. They have them in, you know, Hobby Lobby, at Joann's, um, in their, usually in their scrapbooking section or stamp section. It's a good thing you all can't hear us. Hey, <laughs> none of us are perfect. I just, I just prefer not to. <laughs> not the Although finger. sometimes it works, you know. Sometimes just no other word will do <laughs> to express what you happen to be feeling at that moment in time. Yeah, they can't see what you're doing there. Right? I know. Let's see, joy. Okay. So I'm going to do peace. P. E. A. C. And there is an E in there. There we go. I, you guys know by now that I love these little stamps i they're i use them for so many different things um what was the other word we're going to do? known as herpes in the craft world <laughs> you just made his day <laughs> that's awesome it's hilarious <laughs> and it's so true yeah and then um i was trying to think of another word to use and i decided on noel okay where'd the l go there it is Okay. We don't use glitter in the more custom motorcycle industry. We use metallic flake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> There's no difference. It's, it's, glitter. it's glitter. It's big glitter. <laughs> yeah. It's bigger glitter. <laughs> it's bigger glitter. Well, the difference is, is in the automotive industry, it's usually encapsulated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's in something. But it does get everywhere. Yeah. So, oh yeah, it does. <laughs> so, uh, the only thing I would left to do is to, I would use a hole punch to put that on there like I did with these. And then I just used a little bit of um, Baker's twine to tie them onto the sled. I like the idea of having it so that it looks like the, the rope on the sled. And then the tag hangs on the tree as well so i think i don't know i just thought it was a cute way to to finish these ornaments i'm going to zoom up i think we're... <laughs> we're, we're we're done messing with that so um these little guys will go out to the garage and get a once they're completely dry we'll get a good coat of uh, matte spray to finish them off. I think they're going to be really cute on the tree. Now, I have not finished the back on mine yet, but I will because that bugs me no end. Um, and I will probably just do a coat of black on the back of the ornament and then probably paint the year on them. So 2021 will go on the year of them. But um, that is our little set of ornaments. <laughs> like doll and action figure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed doing these. Like, I think they, these oh. are fun and they're super easy to do. Just there's a few steps to get there, but um, I think they're really an awesome addition to your collection of ornaments. And you switched me over and didn't warn me. <laughs> I, I could have had like talking to the camera. <laughs> no, I could have been knuckle deep. <laughs> Thanks for that. You're oh welcome. my god, look at all the blue hair. Yeah, blue hair. Blue hair. Blue. <laughs> blue. blue. No. Blue. Blue hair. Oh, okay. Blue hair. Purple hair. You know. Purple. Purple. It's that purple shampoo is supposed to keep your hair from <laughs> looking all yellow, and instead I end up with blue hair. But uh, these were fun. I enjoyed 
uh, designing these and the, and one of those things every once in a while you paint something and you just sort of giggle while you're working and it was the same thing with this i really enjoyed doing these little guys they were fun much like those damn gnomes that i did last couple of weeks ago i call them the damn gnomes because they're everywhere everywhere you look there's gnomes but they're i couldn't help myself i had to do a gnome so what's this yeah oh yes the membership oh yeah um the membership um this is how it works um it's a monthly subscription and you can cancel it at any time you can join at any time if you need to take a break for a while you can just cancel it you have to do all of that through youtube so once you set up your account and you've joined the membership anything that you want to do in regards to that membership whether it's cancel or um whatever you need to do you have to do it through that account we have no access to any of that what do you get with your membership um quite a bit i think i hope <laughs> anyway uh, certainly um every month we have a free live class to for members only and that includes the pattern so you would receive the pattern it is not a standard pattern it isn't uh, a one project type deal um i think the smallest one we've had so far was 22 pages yeah and it was it they usually have two to three projects in each pattern so the membership patterns are um quite full there's quite a lot in them plus we have challenges there's usually one or two free patterns smaller ones um during the month as well <laughs> plus you have access to all of the other classes that are filmed yeah. that are for members only so if there is a project in there that you'd like to do the only thing you would have to do is get the pattern but the the class itself is available to you as a member so anything that we've done before you yeah. also have access to <laughs> and tons of freebies yes yes and we try to give you as much as we possibly can uh the membership is 24.99 us 24.99 us i couldn't remember for the yeah, life of me 29.99 canadian yeah and then um and that is charged every month uh, on the date that you joined. So it's, it, we don't have a particular date. Um, uh, are we doing it on a Tuesday again? or? Um, I have it on a Monday. <laughs> oh, shit. And you're working Tuesday anyway, so. Yeah, but I'm working Monday evening. I know. So we may have to change the format of that yeah. class or move it i'm kind of hoping we don't have to move it but um we may have to uh, because i won't have a cameraman <laughs> he's nope. working nights no, i'm working nights give me a second Let me so um but yeah the classes usually run on the last tuesday of the month usually um, oh which is the 30th yeah so we can either do it on the 30th because i don't know if i'm going to be working that yeah day anyway that, so. but uh, we will post it if we have have to make a change in the date for this month's class but the class generally runs on the last tuesday of every month and uh, it is live uh, you can however it is also recorded so you'll be able to watch it all of those videos for members only only members are able to access them so you have to be a member if you're going to be accessing any of that video um what else so if wednesday would be good yeah i don't work wednesday nights okay we'll look at it yeah. yep so we may have to change the date for this month's class because of his work schedule so uh, but i will post that as soon as possible for you um any other questions about the membership group it's like I said, it's you get access to some challenges. We have free patterns. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> we do have a lot of fun. We have a Facebook group as well as the community tab on YouTube. So if you want to post pictures or if you have questions, um, you can go to either one of those. The Facebook group is on um, is again for members only. And so uh, you have to request access to that. Um, downloadable information if you are a member all of that is on my website you can just simply click on the paid membership download section as long as you've been granted access and you are a paid member you will be able to access all of it so there and there is quite a bit and we add more every month so 
Yeah, we can do it. Yep. So, um, hopefully, that's answered all of your questions. Uh, if you have a request for a live, feel free to ask. I'm always looking for ideas. Um, I did have a piece with grapes, a uh, Tuscan theme thing that was hanging on the wall here a little while ago, and a couple of people have requested that. So, I'm thinking that might be next Saturday's. What's the Facebook group? Facebook group is for paid members only. only. Yeah. Yeah. And it is called, it's Tracy Moreau YT paid membership group. So, yeah. And we put all the information up there. Yeah. So a lot of contact and we get to share information, share their pictures get of your finished some of the works. Project. Some of their projects are flipping amazing. I mean, not some, all of them are some talented people in this group. When They're incredible. Will the preview for the December pattern be shown? Preview is already up. Is it? Oh, for the group. Yes. Oh, that will be up uh, next week. So probably. Right. Yeah. The, the, night, of the, the yeah. night of the class. Night of the class. Night of the class. You'll get a preview. Yeah, yeah we could do Wednesday. I'm yeah. free Wednesday. <laughs> um. Do, 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 do. Um. He's looking for questions. I'm looking for questions. <laughs> Scrilly. I don't see all the questions. I don't see the chat on here, so Scrolling. he has to tell me. Uh, da, 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 da. No. <laughs> no, I think we're good. I don't see any more questions. All right. All right, guys. Thanks so much, as always, for you guys coming and joining us every Saturday. We really appreciate it. We oh, <laughs> love spending time with you guys. Is Wednesday the 1st? Uh, no, it'd be the 24th. Yeah, I want to do it before the end of the month because yeah, because yeah. I think we had it slated for the twenty third, right? No, we had it slated for the twenty sixth. That would be a Friday. Okay, for the Monday, I can't see it from here. Twenty ninth. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I might have to bring it closer. <laughs> yeah, we might. Well, and we'll sort that out, and and we'll let you guys know right away. Um. Enjoy the butter chicken. Yes. Enjoy the butter chicken. Yes, I intend to. <laughs> I didn't have to cook today. So. I haven't even started cooking yet. Yeah. Well, he's got to get his button gear and we need to get off of here. Guys, thanks again every Saturday for joining us. We really do appreciate it. And we have fun, just as much fun as you. Hopefully <laughs> you have as much fun as we do. So um, next week's class, uh, break out your, get your Tuscan on. We're going to do something Tuscany. On Ooh. next Saturday, something with texture, something with stencils, something with a whole bunch of fun techniques. So that will be for next Saturday. And I think that's it for today. Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. Everybody, mwah, love you. Stay safe. <laughs>